Hello, good evening again. Welcome back to the uh, kitchen table. Um, just been fiddling around with a few bits and pieces and trying some things out, but I thought I would take the opportunity now, just before I tidy away, to do a quick um, video, which is a viewer request. Um, excuse me, uh, this is a very nice Syrah Cabernet Sauvignon from Spain. Mm. Young, but very nice indeed. Anyway, um, God, it is good. So um, the request is, um, I've had uh, more and more people kind of looking at changing from the default um, vision mode into NASA mode. And we discussed that one of the, one of the things that you'll get with that is um, IOC, Intelligent Orientation Control, Home Lock and Course Lock. And we've done a video about that, explaining it. Um, I've had some questions about people about what the S1 switch different modes are. So we're going to talk about those. Uh, obviously, if you read the DJI manual, it tells you how to change into another mode. And we've discussed in the past about just making sure you're ready for that jump. Um, it's not a big jump, but it just adds a few extra things to think about, which is why we're going to talk about them today. So, um, yeah, on S1 in the up position, it's, it's no different to the default vision or Phantom 2 mode. It's, it's basically flying with full GPS control. Uh, let's let's use our old friend. I'm going to bring out our old friend, the Hubsan, because bless it, it hasn't had any airtime lately. Big Brother Vision's just taking it all. But anyway, so in GPS mode, as we know, the um, the aircraft will hold station. If it sticks off, it will hold station in terms of height. It will hold station in terms of lateral direction, and it will hold station in terms of your. Um, now, when you switch over to the NASA mode, you also have the opportunity to program a couple of different flight modes onto the remaining switch uh, positions on S1. So obviously, if both your switches are up, S1 and S2, GPS mode, just like you're used to, like in the standard vision mode, that's fine. People have asked me, what's the difference between ATI and GPS? And should they put the third switch position into manual mode or fail safe or ATI? So let's answer some of those. So the first one is the second position um, of the S1 in NASA mode is going to give you ATI, which is short for attitude hold. So what this basically does is, is pretty much the same as GPS hold with one crucial difference. So it will hold height and it will hold orientation in your and it will keep itself level. But what it won't do is counteract for any wind drift. So if the wind's blowing left to right, it will blow like this if it's coming towards you here and so on. Um, so the GPS um, is not holding station. And what some people have found, if they don't have a gimbal, um, that obviously if it's holding station in the wind like this in GPS mode, you're going to get a wonky shot as it tries to fight that wind that wants to push it this way. If you switch to attitude mode, suddenly it will hold itself in a straight attitude, but that wind will start to push it. So that's what attitude mode is, or atti mode. Now you get the choice when you switch into NASA uh, mode to make your third position on the S1 switch, the lowest one, the choice of a repeat of atti, which is kind of a nice safe option because whatever you do, you're not gonna switch it accidentally to anything that might cause it to you know, do something that we don't want it to do. The other option that you've got is to select it into fail safe. What that basically means is if you select third position as fail safe, you're flying around, you don't like what's happening, you think it's all gone horribly wrong, I want it to come to home. Instead of switching the transmitter off, you can flip the switch down and it will go into the normal return to home mode. So it'll go up 20 meters and then it will bring itself back and land. Um, now that means you can flip in and out of that without having to switch off the transmitter because I know there's always a nervous moment, isn't there, when you switch back on again, I can I take control? So that might be useful for some people. Um, that's a decision you have to make. The other option you have, and this is a big caution one for me, is to put it into fully manual mode. And what fully manual mode does is turn your vision with all its super duper bells and whistles and GPS and barometer into basically a big version of one of these. It will know not to fall out the sky in terms of keeping its uh, level because it has gyroscopes. But other than that, 
in terms of being able to keep a height, being able to keep an orientation, and being able to keep a lateral hold, that's all down to you. It will be affected by wind, it will be affected by changes in your tilt angle, it will be affected by its own prop wash. You really need to be on the sticks all the time. It's a handful and it is a definite skill. If you've flown one of these before and can hover it and fly it around your, your living room, nose in and so on and so forth, then you've probably got a bit of a fighting chance. The main thing that I think will catch people out if they're not used to it is that in manual mode, the throttle at center position, hands off the stick, is not hover. It's 50% power. And in almost all cases, that isn't enough to keep the vision in the air. So if you suddenly flip it into manual mode when you've got the throttle at 50%, it will, your, your nice vision will kind of do this. Um, so you need to be very, very careful. And I, I sort of look up um, some more instruction on that because it's, it's beyond the scope of one of these quick videos. So uh, I really wouldn't put it into manual unless you, you actually you know, are an accomplished manual flyer or you want to learn in which case, you know, put it very high up in the sky and try it and at your own risk. So there we are, that's a quick video about the um, the different flight modes that NASA will, will give you. Um, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If there's any other um, videos that you think would be useful, then uh, stick it in the comments or drop me a line, uh, however you want to do it. And that's it for now. Thanks very much and I'll uh, speak to you again soon. Bye.